Mavericks, this is Rob Reinhold. Nice to be here. I'm joined by Mr. Anka Sharma, and this is the Currency Room. And I cannot believe how fast this year has gone. Uh, Ten months in the books. We're going to close the books up for October trading on Monday night, send out our profit distribution checks to our traders, and then the month of October is over, and we open up a new book for November. And this is what I always love about trading. The market doesn't care what you did last month. You might have had a great month. You might have had a bad month. The market doesn't care and doesn't even know. So you get to basically close the book on whatever you did in October and you got to start fresh. So let's talk about November. We do still have one day left, two days left in October trading, but let's go through what happened this week. Uh, we had the equity market really take off and I really feel this week was a week of two markets. We had, first of all, the Dow was on fire all week long. The Dow's up like 6% for the week. And then we had the NASDAQ that was really bad. And we had really bad earnings reports. We had a bad earnings report from Google. We had a bad earnings report from Amazon. We had a bad earnings report from Microsoft. And so that took tech down just really big. So we had two markets here. We had the basic S&P-like general stock a general company, they did well. And then we had the NASDAQ just do terrible. And the question I asked on Thursday was, okay, which one's going to happen? Is the market, the strong market, going to pull up the tech stocks and save them? Or is tech going to get so weak that it pulls the rest of the market down? Well, we got the answer on Friday, and we'll take a look at that chart here. Uh, the market pulled the tech stocks up. So we are 10% off the October lows that we're seeing more strength than weakness in equities. And we think that is a significant low that we made back on October 13th. We think that is a tradable bottom. We think the market's likely to head up a little bit more. We've got yields and dollar pulling back, which is helping this bull market go higher. We got a stronger than expected GDP. And we saw the cryptos do really, really well. So let's take a look at some of the economic reports we got last week. We finally, after so much drama, finally got the Chinese GDP report on Sunday night, and it was much better than expected. Now, look, I don't want to go all conspiracy theory here, uh, but I know I read a lot of people saying, okay, that's very suspicious that they delayed the number for two weeks. Everyone was saying it's because it's a bad number, and then two weeks later, the number comes out, and it's a good number. Okay, look, it is what it is. We can talk conspiracy theory. That's what we call cocktail talk. It's, it's really interesting to talk about over some drinks with some friends. For trading, it doesn't matter. That's the number. And the market is going to react a certain way. We've got European PMIs. They were a little bit weak. We got UK PMI and US PMI. You could see those are weak. Weak consumer confidence. And then on Tuesday, we got Aussie CPI that was stronger than expected. Then we got the Bank of Canada on Wednesday, only raised by 50 basis points. They were expected to raise by 75 basis points. They only raised by 50. And then we heard from the ECB. So we heard from a lot of central banks this week. The ECB came out and they did as expected, raised by 0.75%. We heard from the Bank of Japan on Thursday. They did nothing. They left rates where it is. No one was surprised at that. And then you can see on Friday, we got Canada GDP came in a little bit better than expected. So if you break down these numbers, just what we saw across the board, we're seeing things like the PMIs. We're seeing them really soften. These are leading indicators. And then we saw things like GDP reports come out better than expected. Now these are lagging indicators. So what these are showing us is that the third quarter was actually pretty strong economically but all of the signs pointing to fourth quarter is that this economy across the world is slowing down. Now, is that going to cause central banks to pivot? We'll be discussing that for the next probably six months as we go through it. So let's get into the hard numbers here of what happened last week. And like I said, discussing that is cocktail talk. We'd love to talk about it, but it doesn't help you through trading. Discuss what could happen in February. Trade the market in front of you. And the market in front of you right now, take a look at it. S&P closed up 3.6%. The World Index closed up 2.7%.
Cryptos had a great week and cryptos are finally looking like a buy on the charts. It's been a long time since I've been able to say that, but they look good. Oil, a little bit of an up week. So let's take a look at the S&P specifically. And I really want to get into this chart because we've talked a lot about moving averages. Now, moving averages are a great, easy way to identify trends. It's very simple. If the average price is moving lower, it's a downtrend. I mean, think about that. It's common sense. If the average price is going higher, it's an uptrend. It's common sense. So when both of these moving averages, the 20 and the 50 on the daily chart, are going lower, it is definitively a downtrend. And it's a downtrend until these change. You can see we got a change right back here in October where all of a sudden this 20 period moving average has started to move higher. So when you take a look at the 20 period moving average, it's saying it is now an upward move. When you take a look at the 50, which is a longer term thing, it's still sloping downward. But for the first time in probably two months, we have a divergence saying, hey, it's not a clear signal that this is a bear market. We now have some conflicting signals. And then one of the things we always look at is, is it trading above or below the moving averages? We're above the 20. And take a look. We're above the 50 now. We're above the 50-day moving average. Now, this is the line in the sand we use at Maverick. Above the 50-day moving average is more bullish than bearish. Below it, more bearish than bullish. We can't ignore the price action. Now, look, I love bear markets. I have loved September and October. It's been fantastic. I love trading bearishly. But when I take a look at this chart, I have to admit that the bearish move is over for the time being. And now I have to take a look at being at least neutral or bullish here. Ankit, what do you think about this chart on equities? Yeah, Rob. Well, definitely. I think as we take a look at this chart, I mean, everything is pointing out to me to the upside. And I talked about this last week where I indicated that it seems like the markets are trying to carve out a bottom. And so far, again, we got the confirmation as we got above that 50 moving average. So I think at this point, it's not really about what's known out there. I mean, all the pessimism is still out there. Um, the, the yields are rising. Again, again, take a look at a day like today. Um, the yields are also rising and the markets are rising. So I think at a certain point, uh, we, we hit that point where we have a little bit more of the upside potential, especially what we saw early this summer. You know, we have seen these big rallies, even though we are in this downtrend. So I think we're off that 10% off the lows. But I think at this point, um, we haven't been above the 20 to 50 day moving average since mid-August. So I think this is the first kind of signal that's giving us that actually market wants to go higher. And again, these this is where even in bear markets, you get the sharpest moves on these rallies. So I think there's definitely more upside potential. We can get uh, we can get we can easily see some gains uh, for the next few weeks. And again, this is really also falling in line with the seasonality patterns. You know, we see the markets uh, kind of bottom out or sometimes this rough period is really bottom out in October. And I, I must say, like this year, this uh, seasonality pattern is working out the best. We saw a pickup in volatility when the September hits and we have seen nothing but volatility and a downside put movement in the markets and then mid, mid October market stabilized. So I think uh, as we are heading into midterms, I think at this point I see bigger uh, uh, potential for the upside than the downside. So I think what we are going to see is any sort of pullbacks being bought out, which is again, the opposite of what we saw back in September and October. So I, I think I like uh, to change the tune here and look for a little bit more upside in the forecoming a uh, few weeks. And we'll see again. We're not committed it long term, but I think this is likely to happen in the next few weeks uh, time horizon. Totally agree. Um, definitely not calling a bottom in the bear market, but definitely calling a tradable bottom. Now, if you take a look at support and resistance levels, we have a little bit more work to do to get above this low here in September. And we came down, broke it, hit our head up against it. So look, it's not like an all clear yet, but everything is showing us that it's likely going higher. If we can break above this 3,900 on the S&P, there is no resistance until 4,100. I mean, this is there's no resistance in here. I don't see any reason why the market can't go up. This is about another 5%. I have seen no reason why we couldn't see this happen. So both Ankin and I are risk on here for the first time in a while. But the question is, okay, 
what's going to do the best in this current risk on situation of typically we say Aussie Kiwi are going to do the best. Okay, look at what happened. We had a very strong week this week. The Kiwi went up, but the Aussie didn't. The CAD, because of the Bank of Canada not raising, it it fell back. So the playbook of, hey, we like a risk on trade. We come over here to what's moving the pound. Now look, I was just in the UK. I would like to think that my consumer spending had something to do with this jump in the pound. Probably not. But, you know, the pound was the outperformer. This is where all the money went. Everything else was fairly muted. But what we did see was very clear was weak risk off currencies. Dollar, yen, and Swiss franc were all weak. And so this is just clear. Maybe we're not super clear on what to buy in Forex, but it's pretty clear what to sell in Forex. Now, when we come over here to what's clear, I got to say for the first time in a long time, I actually think the cryptos are a better buy than uh, like the Aussie and the Kiwi. What do you think about that call, Ankit? You know, I definitely agree. I was actually looking at the weekly charts and this is the first time that I noticed that our our, currency, our uh, crypto basket was actually hitting uh, the, the 20 moving average. So I think at this point, if the it's a risk on environment kind of come back into the markets and we we get these uh, movements that could actually last for a few weeks at a time i mean i think um, the weekly chart that really was pointing out to me that the next breakout can come within these currencies uh, within this cryptocurrency so i i think uh, yeah i would i would say so that for the first time i haven't really liked cryptos for the most part of this year and this is the first time where i'm like you know what if this really breaks out uh, above the above the 20 moving average, I think there's more the further upside potential there. So I would agree with you uh, on that one. Well, let's take a look at the cryptos here in a second. But before we jump into it, um, as you can see, we have worked our way off of a negative three. So three weeks ago, we were at a negative three in the equity market. We went to a negative two. We went to a negative one. We went to a zero. Now we're actually at a plus one. So again, we are mildly bullish on equities. And if we come here and look at cryptos, for the first time we are trading above 20 and 50 day moving averages. Now I want to point out the last time we broke above. The last time we broke out above these areas, it was a terrible signal. It hit these levels and turned right back down and went back into a downtrend. Now look, we have no idea what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks. But I want to just show you the difference between what we're seeing. We saw the same thing to the upside that we saw here. Take a look at how different the candles are. Uh, this is more of a base where this is just a hit and fell. I would love to see this spend a little bit more time basing here and then break out. That to me is the buy signal for cryptos. So again, this is our crypto basket. This is our four currencies equally divided by four. I think we're just waiting for a nice little buy signal once it finally breaks out above the highs of this week. Next week, we've got more central bank news. We've got the RBA on Monday night. We will be meeting live as a firm to trade this one. Come join us live. We're going to be looking for trade setups around this report. Expectations are for a 0.25% raise. Likely that's what we're going to get, but again, their statement is going to be much more important. After that, on Tuesday, probably the biggest news of Tuesday is the JOLTS. Now look, if you've never heard of the JOLTS job openings report, don't worry. No one has cared about this at all. Forever. Forever. Until the Fed talked about it last meeting. And he said, we want to see the job openings come down. They specifically said that. And so all of a sudden, this report that no one cared about ever, this, this report's been out for years and years. No one's ever cared about it. All of a sudden, it's like one of the most important reports out there. So the JOLTS job numbers, if we see these job numbers, expectations are for 975. If these even come in less than this, man, that's going to be a really good sign that the Fed is possibly looking to pause on their rate rise. And again, that's going to move the dollar lower. That's going to move rates lower. Equity market's going to go higher. So I think that this report 
Tuesday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, is probably one of the biggest reports of this week. Yes, we do have employment change out of New Zealand. I think you got to watch for that one if you're trading the Kiwi. But Wednesday, big news, FOMC statement. We will also be meeting live as a firm to trade that statement and the press conference after. So I think Tuesday and Wednesday are going to be great, great trading sessions. And then take a look at Thursday. We've got Bank of England comes out. They're expected to raise by 75 basis points. We're likely to get continued strength in the pound unless their policy is that they're going to cut back. And then on Friday, we've got jobs reports. So this is just a stellar, stellar week. And Ankit, I can't remember a week that's been this stacked up for all year. Can you remember a week with more economic news than this? I mean, definitely this is one of the busiest uh, week uh, coming ahead. I mean, this week was actually a very busy week. Uh, but yeah, next week, I'm definitely excited. And again, I think that most of that excitement is really coming from the FOMC rate statement. Um, again, we all know that, you know, the uh, right now, all that focus is on the FOMC. And it doesn't matter if the uh, Bank of Canada didn't raise uh, rates as, as, as much as they expected. I mean, all that focus really now is on this uh, FOMC and the U.S. dollar. I mean, we've seen big implication when dollar is strong. It really hurts everything else. I mean, the dollar is weak, really helps all the other currencies to lift up. So I think the biggest thing right now is really figuring out what the FOMC is going to do and what the dollar is going to do. And if the markets are turning, then the other thing we really have is the dollar to pull back because now we are seeing, uh, you know, flight towards uh, risk towards instead of flight towards safety. And dollar has done really held in because of that flight towards safety. Now, if the Fed can... Uh, you know, sort of uh, be a little bit more slowing down on their on their tone. I, I'm not sure if they would, but if that's the case, we can get some hints off of it. I think then we can expect dollar to pull back, which again will create some massive opportunities in the short term. And I talked about it, you know, the dollar since September, dollar gained about 7.5% on a currency basket across the board. Now that's a massive move in just a short period of time. So I, I'm very excited for this because, again, if there is any sort of pivot or any sort of uh, change in their statement, uh, I think that will create some bigger moves. So maybe this week was not the biggest week in the currency market, but I think next week definitely is setting up for a big fireworks. So I'm ex uh, excited for it. You are exactly right. Um, if the dollar falls substantially, uh, there will be fire underneath risk assets. The dollar has been holding everything lower especially international and especially emerging growth. Boy, if that dollar starts to weaken significantly, we are going to see a massive rally across the board. Because again, that's how big of a deal the dollar has been. And, you know, this is ground zero for uh, a strong dollar is the cryptos have really, really struggled. As the dollar has gone higher, the cryptos have struggled. I think a weak dollar, remember, a weak dollar means that people are selling their dollars and looking to put it in other currencies. They're looking to say, hey, I bought dollar assets. Now I'm looking to sell dollar assets and buy other assets. This is ground zero for other assets people want to buy. So Bitcoin, we are now trading above the 20, above the 50. We're even getting almost a slope change. Look, this is classic trend change behavior. It doesn't mean it has to change trends. But if you look in all the books of what you like to see in a trend change, this is what's happening. We're seeing the moving average flattened out. They're starting to curl higher. We just need this 20 to cross above the 50. We need to get a breakout of 21,000. And our next target on this is going to be 22.5. So I, I like Bitcoin, but it's not quite ready yet. Need it to break above 21,000. Let's go to Bitcoin Cash. And it's a different story here. Bitcoin Cash is still trading below everything. Everything's still drifting lower. So do you see how Bitcoin Cash is not as good? So we're just going to say, don't worry about Bitcoin Cash. There's better things out there to buy in crypto. And speaking of better things to buy out there in crypto, here we have another one. We're starting to see this classic bottoming action. Moving averages start to curl up, trading above the moving averages. A base, if we can break out of this 1600 on Ethereum, our next shot up here is up to 1800. So we like Ethereum as well. We come over here to Litecoin and again, it just doesn't look as good. So 
when you're taking a look at cryptos, I think you got to focus on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and really just ignore the rest. Those are, that's where the quality is in crypto. Let's take a look through the foreign currencies. And you can see that we've got just a major, major level here on dollar. Dollar has not broken below its moving averages since August, and it just did it briefly and then recovered and just had this monster rally. If we break below this, I think the dollar can really give up. So we're not there yet. We haven't triggered into a downtrend. We need to see a move below the moving averages, a bounce up, and then a move lower. That is going to be the real confirmation that the dollar is now downtrending, not uptrending. But once it goes below the 50-day moving average, we can definitely say this last uptrend is over. It's going to have to gather some steam before it can make a new uptrend. I think there's still a little bit of time that you need to wait before you really go dollar short. What do you think about that, Ankit? Do you think it's ready to go now, or do you think people have to wait for a little bit? I think this next week is the the sort of a holding up. Uh, what's the dollar going to hold up? I think... Uh, this next FOMC meeting is going to be deciding that. If, and I, I think if you look at this week, um, when Bank of Canada raised less than expected, I mean, we immediately saw the dollar actually underperform as well because somehow, you know, people were kind of connecting the dots that, hey, I think it's that's what the Fed's going to do as well. Um, and if that's what they would do, I, I think that would create a, a very nice opportunity for dollar to sell off. So personally speaking, I think that's what I'm looking at. And I know the Fed's in a tough position as well because, you know, they don't want to spark a market rally. And uh, this is really a fighting tale with the Fed as well. But if they can follow the similar suit as the Bank of Canada did, and remember, Bank of Canada was the first one this year who actually started raising rates. So they have been the one that started off this trend. They're the one that's been ahead of the pack. So I'm very curious for this week. And if the Fed is really what's holding this up, if the Fed will start to tone down and maybe do uh, a 75 basis point this week. But remember, it's not about this rate hike. I think it's the following rate mm -hmm. hike. If they say we're going to do a smaller rate hike and, like going in the uh, December, I think then that, that would uh, set up a dollar for a nice little pullback across the board. So uh, we're already seeing the dollar retreat ahead of it. I would love to kind of see the maybe a couple of days going into it and then sell off the news. Um, again, that's what I'm expecting. And of course, the Fed can uh, throw some uh, curveballs there. But I think that's the one thing we need to see to turn for a lot of the other currencies that has been kind of hurting for the last month and a half to really appreciate in the short term. So that's a trade that I'm looking for next week. And I think I think that's a trade that has, has the highest, uh, you know, reward to risk ratio on it. You know, I agree 100%. I do think the dollar is likely headed lower, but I think right here, right now, it's it's a harder trade than the yen. I think the yen here is setting up for a really nice breakdown as well. So if we get a risk on move, I actually think the yen is an easier trade. I think it's an easier trade, especially the first part of, of this week. Now, if you say maybe the dollar on Thursday, Friday will be a better short, okay, I think you've got a point. But I think early on in the week, this yen, this base here looks ready to break down. I really like yen on the short side. So I'm looking at yen short trades first part of the week. And then we can also add in the Swiss franc. So again, I do like dollar. I agree with everything you said. But when I'm looking for what's the easier trade, I think the easier trade, especially early in the week before the FOMC, is short yen Sure, Swiss franc. What do you think about that being an easier, easier trade early on? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I think that's one of the things that I've been talking about this entire week or even the last two weeks. I really like how Swiss franc is now moving lower. Um, you know, we had this volatility in Swiss franc. We had the relative strength in, uh, in Swiss franc, but I think that's slowly given up. So I really like the fact that this is something that has lower volatility. So it's easier to ride that trend. You know, if you look at the dollar, Dollar might have a direction, but has a lot more volatility to it. But now if you take a look at uh, even the yen as well, we had a lot of volatility to it in the past week or so because of the interventions. Um, so, you know, we, if you're liking trades that would last you for weeks or for a few days to a week at a time, again, those longer trades, 
you know, that volatility makes a big, big impact on it. And I, I think this, these are the easier one to kind of uh, follow and not have a whole lot of volatility between. So the fact that it's given up that 20, the 50 moving average is slowly bleeding. But I think this is where it can accelerate. Uh, and again, um, looking at the momentum, looking at the velocity, everything is really pointing out to the downside. And so this is not a fast moving pair. This is a slow moving pair, but we have that consistency to it. So I think, yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, we are not really sitting in, uh, at a point where dollar is only the best short out there. I think along with dollar, um, we are seeing just franc seems to be in the same category as well. I think this, the, the dollar is what's more, uh, you know, volatile. It might go up pretty fast, go down pretty fast. But if you're looking for a smoother ride, I really like some of these Swiss franc crosses here. And especially now, I love the fact that we are seeing a divergence between the euro and the Swiss franc. If we take a look at the euro chart, the euro is now on the upside. So I really like the fact that now we are seeing an opposite divergence and the entire year, you know, euro actually, euro since Frank was sitting at 105. Now, and it actually went down to about 95. I mean, that's a big drawdown. And now we're slowly seeing the euro since Frank working his way up. So based on the relatives from the weakness, based on that divergence, I really like this Frank short. So I think it's just a matter of depending on what you want to pair with. Um, but I think along with this dollar cross, this just frank seems to be a better play as well. Agree. So pretty clear what to sell short. I mean, it's dollar, yen, Swiss franc. And cryptos, we liked Bitcoin and Ethereum. Let's take a look through the rest of the Forex to see what actually looks good. And so we like Euro. I think Euro is definitely a pair. So Euro Swiss franc is top of my list. Take a look at pound. Pound looks better than the Euro. The pound looks absolutely fantastic here. We've got this nice ascending triangle pattern with the breakout. I'm going to put pound even above the euro. So pound Swiss franc is a currency pair I think is definitely worth watching. And take a look. I mean, early on next week, we've got a large breakout from a long high base that lasted for about four days. That's a nice breakout to the upside on pound. We come over here to the CAD and boy, I literally, I don't think I've traded the CAD since the summer. Um, there's been no reason to, so let's just skip it. Moving averages are flat. It's in a range. Let's stick, it, let's stick with the things that are moving. This is typically where the Aussie and the Kiwi shine. Here's the problem. Their charts look terrible. So as much as I would like to go to the playbook of a risk on, everyone is looking to buy risk on. Aussie usually does better. It's down on Friday. It should not be down on Friday. So I got to say, I don't like the Aussie here. And if I come over here to the Kiwi, it looks better, but it doesn't look great. So, you know, the playbook of go long Aussie, go long Kiwi on risk on moves, it's not working right now. It's just not working. So when it comes right down to it, we take a look at what is moving. Um, we got Euro and pound long and cryptos, and we've got Yen and Swiss franc. And that's really where we are going to be focusing here is uh, pound is looking like it has the most momentum. So at the start of next week, the currency crosses we like the best is going to be pound. Now, look, I am not going to be looking at Aussie short, even though, again, the chart looks like it wants to turn back down. This is a risk on play, and I really want to play risk on plays. This will likely strengthen a bit. So I'm now looking at Swiss franc and yen. So this is what we're going to take a look at pairing up. So let's go out there. Let's take a look at some charts. And it's pretty clear to me, uh, top on the list is pound Swiss franc. So pound Swiss franc, here we are. Here's a daily chart. And you can see that you know, everything is looking great. Look at how long this base was here. We had a base of about nine days and we broke out of it. We've got a cross on the 2050 day moving average. Look how long this thing has been in a downtrend. We have moved from 126 all the way down to 106. And we've come back and we still aren't even halfway. So this one to me, look, we are going to have some resistance right in here. There's no question that once we get up into this area, there's a band of this resistance we're going to need to work through. But I still think there's enough meat on the bone there. You can buy it and maybe this works its way up into the 160, 162, 163 area. You know, we may not get all the way to the top, but I think there's enough meat on the bone here uh, to chase a long trade. After that, I think it does need to consolidate before it moves higher. 
When we take a look at where we are in a four hour chart, again, everything is just screaming buy. It's saying, yeah, go ahead and buy it. Um, let's take a look at Euro Yen. So again, we could obviously take a look at Pound Yen as well. So Pound Yen would be another trade to take a look at. But for the sake of time, let's take a look at our Euro Yen. And you can see that we have broken out of some consolidation. And really this consolidation has been going on since May. We've just been hanging out in this area for months and months and months. And now we're breaking out, we're breaking out. And now we're doing more of a base up in here where we've just parked here. Here's about where the low is. Here's about where the high is. I think a breakout here of 147.55. I think that is where you want to be entering this trade. So Euro Yen, Pound Swiss Franc. You could take a look at Pound Yen. You could take a look at Euro Swiss Franc. I think those are the trades. Ankit, is there anything you want to take a look at? Hey, Rob. Well, you looked at the uh, the uh, place that I was looking at, but uh, there's a couple of other uh, pairs I want to bring out because, uh, again, we are focusing on relative strength and weakness. Uh, one of the th uh, things that I've seen turn is the Kiwi. Aussie Kiwi, Rob, if you want to pull that up, I really like the fact that, again, this is one of those trades that have been very stubbornly one way. Aussie Kiwi has been entire year. I mean, take a look at last November, December. I mean, this run has started last year and almost lasted a whole year before turning lower. So, again, this is where, uh, you know, looking at some boring place, which is, again, not following um, you know, the diver, you know, not following the, the dollar pairs or the yen pairs. We are following two currencies, but they're now diverging. I mean, take a look at the, the pullback that we saw. After, you know, we got the downward trend here, make a lower low with a lower high, now trying to make a lower low again. So again, this is very clear to me um, that the Kiwi is a better play compared to the Aussie. So, you know, I mean, there have been times when Aussie and Kiwi are just kind of doing the same thing. And I, I that's when I would say, just go along the Aussie, the Kiwi, it's the exact same thing. I think right now, Kiwi seems to be a better buy. And, and one of the other things I want to point out is that Kiwi was the one of the worst performer this year. So there's definitely room for Kiwi to rally. And I think we're seeing the early signs of Kiwi to kind of diverse. So, Rob, I want to pull up uh, Kiwi says Frank. So I like the Aussie Kiwi on the short side if it breaks that 110 level. But Kiwi says Frank, I mean, take a look at that. Even with the uh, reserved movement that we are seeing from the uh, from the uh, from the uh, other pair, I mean, take a look at this one. Kiwi says Frank is now above the 20 and the 50. So if the Kiwi can really turn around, um, I think this is, again, setting up very nicely. I mean, this, you know, look at the consistency, and I think this is the thing I was talking about earlier is that lower volatility, you know, uh, we have this upward trend and every time it pulls back, it, it's just consistent. So I think what we really want to see is the Kiwi really take off. And I think Kiwi is not going to take off until this whole dollar situation figure out. I think if you look at early this week, uh, each time dollar was weak, Kiwi was actually really strong. So I think what we need to see dollar turn for really get this uh, this currency going. And I think Kiwi says Frank is setting up very nicely here for it. So I like the Kiwi says Frank um, on this further upside to, to take play in that one. So this is, again, on the top of the, the pound says Frank, which is already working. I think these are the pairs that have actually slowly started to turn around, but they really haven't made a full turn yet. And I think that's something that's likely to come in the coming days and weeks. So we always need to pay attention to what's turning, what's steady, and then we can make adjustments to it. Ankit, I totally agree with your Kiwi Swiss Franc play. I think that just looks absolutely fantastic to start the week off as well. So let's wrap this up here. Uh, we we like the equity markets to the upside. I know it's crazy to say I could write an essay on all the reasons why we're not at the bottom of the recession and how things are still going to get worse. But guess what? We trade the market in front of us. And right now it's saying, hey, prices are looking like they want to go higher. Remember, this week, Wednesday, FOMC is going to be huge volatility. If you're fairly new to trading, sit it out. Just sit it out. Do not get messed up with this. We expect there to be three major whipsaw moves. There typically is three major moves where again, dollar runs up 100 pips, dollar runs down 150 pips, and then dollar runs up 300 pips. Those kind of moves cause havoc for Forex traders because if you have stops in which you need to, those get triggered. 
you were right in the end, but you got triggered because you it was just too much volatility. So sit out of that volatility if you aren't an experienced trader. There's going to be plenty of trades for the rest of the week. Just focus on your relative strength and weakness. Stick to your plans and you'll be just fine. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a good weekend. Goodbye.